Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the basic elements in EPA Swim. In this video we're taking a look at the rain gauge element, how to use it, how can it can apply in your projects. Remember we already have a playlist of 20 plus videos on how to use EPA Swim. We go from breaking down basic operations and menus to running complex projects so you can check that out in the description down below if you want to learn more about how to use EPA Swim from a beginner level. But now we're gonna be going into individual elements here. And so we're gonna be going over the rain gauge today. You can find that in the hydrology section here. Rain gauge, right? So we're gonna select it. Remember we can add an element by then adding the plus. I'm gonna place it in the modeling area here. And now we can modify our rain gauge by double clicking. So let's look at the form here. Obviously we have name, you can change the name of it. And the X and Y coordinate, that's just where it is on the map and coordinate plane of the model. Not too pertinent there. You can add a description or even tag the element for future use or future data sorting. But now we're getting into some of the important components here. The first one is the rain formats. So this is the type of rainfall data that was recorded at the rain gauge. You have three options, intensity, volume, or cumulative. So you can select what kind of rainfall you're going to be using as your data source. Because remember, the rain gauge in that the rainfall is going to be the foundation of the EPA swim model in most cases because we need the rainfall to actually fall on the project site to then create the runoff and then route it and determine what is going on in the system. So we need to make sure we set this up properly to begin with. So you can choose the, the time interval that you want to use. For example, we have one minute, five minute, going all the way up to 24 hours to measure rainfall. So you're going to want to select the uh, resolution that your rainfall came in and then that type for your rain gauge when creating your model. So next we have snow catch factor. This is just the cor correction factor that is applied to snowfall uh, when you have a snowfall modeling uh, situation. We're not really going to go into that here. Then this is the data source. You can select whether you have input a custom time series into EPA Swim or if you're going to select a file that you've created outside of EPA Swim maybe in the spreadsheet to, the in, to then import and use in, as rainfall data. So for example, if I went to series name, uh, you can then select the time series that have been created and you can then select that for use there. This is our information on your data file, such as the file name, the station, and then the rain units in inches, uh, millimeters, and so on. So for example, if I select data source file, and then I went here and I selected file name, you can then take me to a menu here and you could search for a file that you've done. So I would select this one and now I have a file that I can use as rainfall data in my project. Now if you want to use something else such as your time series data, you could go here to time series and create a custom time series. So I went time series plus. This allows you to create a name, a description, and then enter in your own custom rainfall data here directly in the menu using date, time, and value there. So that's what allows you to then import the rainfall data into the rain gauge element. Let me open up the form again. And so that can be done in this menu. Now here I've opened up a sample project that we've gone over before in EPA Swim, but let's take a look at the rain gauge element and see how they set it up. So if I double click here, it selected a rain, a rain format of intensity, five minute time interval. And for the data source, we used a time series, which was named two year. So if I went over here to time series and I selected two year, we could see what that time series looked like and the kind of data that was included. So we had five minute time intervals here and it lasted for two hours and you can see the value of rainfall for that stormwater event that's being used to model this specific project. So that's how to use the rain gauge element. Pretty simple, but uh, a lot of the work is going to be making sure you have the correct time series and format set up for import. If you have any questions about that, leave it in a comment down below. Like I said, we have plenty more EPA swim instructional videos that you can find on our channel. And anyways, we'll see you guys next time.